All right, so here we are in episode two, and let's just talk a little bit about mapping online before we get into any more deep parts. So if you already are a map developer or you're very familiar with it, you know, feel free to skip over this and just get on to the section two, get moving on the actual code. But if you're pretty new to it, it might be helpful. Um, so we're going to go over, first we're just going to talk a little bit about mapping online. And either in this video or the next video, I haven't decided yet, we're also going to talk about the different possible mapping solutions available beyond uh, Leaflet.js. Then in the next video, we'll talk about actually Leaflet in particular, and a little bit about data, just because it's important to go over since everybody underestimates it. So for now, why don't we talk a little bit about mapping? So when it comes to online maps, that's obviously something very different um, than paper maps, which have been around for, you know, very long time, especially European history. Uh, maps have a very particular history. A lot of times they're associated with, you know, exploration, kind of like trying to chart understanding, chart knowledge. So that doesn't change with online maps. It's the same thing. When you go to your Google Maps uh, and you're looking for how to get somewhere in your neighborhood, uh, you need to have uh, there's a lot of information on there. There's potentially hundreds of different streets, thousands of different uh, houses all showing, different parks, different business icons, and yet somehow you have either learned to use Google Maps well enough or it's been designed well enough that you're able to find what you're looking for with relative ease. Now, we've also all run into pain when it comes to online maps, either something not showing up or you can't seem to click on it correctly or the map just seems slow and it doesn't seem to load correctly. These are all additional problems that don't come with paper maps. Um, online maps are also, you know, less customizable, um, <clears throat> at least without being like a really strong programmer. You know, you can um, you can draw a map, and of course, map designers uh, are very talented at what they do. But even with pen and paper, you can at least make a something something approximating the map that you're looking for in terms of its colors and its shading. But with online maps, you're uh, stuck to doing a lot more complex things if you want to do styling. So these are obviously some major differences. Um, online maps are going to have bugs, <laughs> and paper maps generally aren't. Um, and what we call online maps is slippy maps. Um, that's kind of a term for how you can scroll around and kind of pull them with your mouse and move your um, move your kind of point of reference around. If you're trying to find, everyone's used to doing that, either using their thumb to scroll the map around or grabbing and moving it with the mouse. And what happens there is that the map is actually a series of images that uh, is being loaded very quickly for you, depending on the zoom level that you're at, um, how far you are zoomed into the map, and where you are. So that means there's like thousands of different images actually saved somewhere on a server. Um, and depending where you are, you get um, a different set of images. So that's why when we're using online maps, we often see that gray area that's not loaded for just a moment, or it looks almost tiled, as in uh, there's a lot of different squares, and some of them are gray, and it's not loaded in, and then they load in. Um, that That's because there are a bunch of images. So that's what we're going to be working with in Leaflet. There's also... Uh, that image model has been changing with some different online maps, uh, including Mapbox, GLJS, and some other um, canvas-based libraries that focus on making things out of vectors rather than out of images, um, which is a pretty cool and efficient process. Um, and you can make some really nice maps that don't have different zoom levels. So that's probably where we're going in the future, and I believe there's uh, some future versions of Leaflet that are working on using vectors. Um, you're also able to import all kinds of tile layers into Leaflet, so you can use vector data, even if Leaflet itself doesn't really support the kind of functionality that Mapbox uh, GLJS does in that, in that place. So then just a couple more things about online maps is that uh, we run into their use in a lot of different places. That might be just plain visualization, it might be analytics, um, I've done routing, I've done people who want some kind of interesting little function like, oh, show me if I combine all my relatives where I should have my wedding, or any kind of interesting idea. There, there's so many different possible uses for online maps, and that's kind of up to you. So uh, feel free to check out my portfolio or other people's portfolios, or just look up online maps and get some more ideas about all the vast ways they're used. 
Um, let's head out and let's just look a little bit at some of the libraries that we're going to talk about. This is our which map section. So there are some differences when it comes to uh, building online maps. We've chosen to go with a leaflet. Now, if you've taken this course, you probably are doing that knowing that it's open source. Usually people think of Google Maps immediately when they think of mapping online. So if you're even looking up a leaflet, you're probably a couple steps uh, past just knowing about Google Maps API. But let's talk about it a little anyway in comparison to leaflet. So Google Maps API is it's a great library. Um, it works pretty well. This is not where I really want to be with it. Um, there we are, JavaScript API. Um, it works well. It's got some really nice built-in functions. It handles a lot of markers. Um, they've actually recently updated their marker as well. Uh, it's got all the basic functions and all the more complex things uh, can, that Leaflet has as well, like loading in different types of files, handling different layers, pop-ups, you know, info windows, and actually Leaflet's even a little bit more open, so it's easier to get in there and make your changes. Um, some of the advantages of Google Maps, from my experience, is it can handle a lot, a bit more marker data uh, right off the bat. I'm not sure exactly what that's about. It's probably something complex in the library, uh, but that was something of my experience. Um, and most of the time, if you're running something simple, you're not going to go over Google Maps um, usage limits, but they are potentially going to track some of your data or other things like that. I'm not sure about their privacy policy, but I doubt they just let you use it without collecting anything. Um, <clears throat> Google Maps also has a lot more documentation in the sense, not, not in its own documentation, but rather just like everybody has asked questions about how to do anything with Google Maps Online. With Leaflet, you're going to find a, a little less. It's going to be a little more specialized in Stack Overflow questions and more programmer-oriented, um, just because people don't tend to use Leaflet right away when they're getting into maps. They, they use it if they know what they're doing a little bit. Um, another library is Mapbox GLJS. This is one that I've been using a lot lately, and I believe it's um, originally based off of Leaflet. It uses a lot of Leaflet styles, or at least um, Mapbox is very close to Leaflet. I think some of the uh, one of the main developers of Leaflet also works with Mapbox. And this is um, uh, one of those vector-based type of maps rather than this slippy map that doesn't load. You see how we get that gray. Um, the vector map will actually still have that effect, but it's different because it doesn't have this zoom level that we're looking at where it jumps from zoom to zoom. Um, Mapbox GLJS has a bit more smooth, so we'll see it here. And see how it's a lot more smooth loading. So that's a big difference, obviously. So, as I said, Leaflet doesn't have that yet, although I believe it's um, upcoming in a future version, which would be really nice to see. So when you're coming to choose what uh, map you should be using, um, obviously open source might be important to a lot of people, either on principle or because you need to have a free solution. Google Maps is not going to be free also in certain private um, applications. I think it has to be public-facing, um, although check their, their API licensing. And when it comes to Leaflet, we're, we're totally okay with open source. Um, I believe you have to check Mapbox as well, but Leaflet is unquestionably the number one in terms of open source. Um, it's also probably number one in terms of pure simplicity and um, the, the ease of the documentation. It's really nicely done. Uh, it's fairly easy to get around, and we're going to be going, getting around it a lot in this whole course. And uh, it's also got quite a lot of plugins, although it can be difficult to select the right ones because they aren't all maintained um, this is by the same people. They're just different GitHub repositories, whereas the stuff maintained by Mapbox and Google Maps tends to work because it's a full company behind it. Um, let's see what else I have in here about our different maps. So there's also more than the ones I've just shown. There's also uh, Cardo, um, OpenStreetMaps. There's a lot of different mapping libraries out there. There's even small custom ones that people have built themselves. Um, obviously, you want to have a pretty well-maintained one. Um, I find these three to be the most common that I run into as an interactive map developer. Uh, Google Maps probably being number one amongst those. But increasingly Mapbox, especially for more uh, professional applications. So some of the questions you want to ask is, um, what kind of data 
are you working with? Now we're going to be talking about that more in the data section, but briefly, if you are working with a type of data in Google Maps, um, that data is going to work fine in Leaflet. But if you're working with the kind of data in Mapbox, very large shape files and very complex GeoJSONs, you're going to have trouble in Leaflet. There's no getting around that. Um, when it terms of what should your map look like, now Google Maps allows a lot of different styling in terms of um, all their custom snazzy maps style stuff. Here it's snazzy maps. Let's just look real quick. So you can see that Google Maps, um, these are all Google Maps styles, so it allows you to restyle um, your map with this kind of stuff. It's, you have to copy this and then insert it. And we're not doing Google Maps thing here, so we're not going to go over this, but that's how you would use this. Leaflet doesn't have something like that. You don't have a map that you can style this way. You have to provide it with a base layer. So you're a bit more stuck in some of the more um, basic free provider layers are out here. We can see some of them in here. We're going to look a little bit more at this later. But you can see we don't quite have the level of styling um, or custom look. Uh, now with putting information, our own information on the map, we're going to have just as much or more uh, ability to change that. Uh, but just the pure map base itself is probably the least customizable in Leaflet. And of course cost barriers, which I mentioned in terms of the open source. So I think that covers a lot of our basic outline of uh, how we get started with mapping. So there's obviously a lot of uses. I hope you're coming to this with a specific use in mind. and um, this just go on through and we'll get started with Leaflet um, in the next episode.